Hello! In this video, we'll gain practice with writing and reading files. If you're enrolled in CSSE 120 or 221, you can check out the Out and In Again project from your Subversion repository. Otherwise, you can just download a zip file of the project. This will be a very simple program in which we write to a file, then read it back in and display it. Let's go to Eclipse. Here we are in Eclipse in the Out and In Again file. We've put a number of comments in here that we're just going to follow along. So first of all, we want to declare a file pointer called out file, and then open a file called data.txt so we can write to it. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So we'll, we'll call ours out file gets, and to open it, we're going to use fopen. fopen takes a couple of parameters. First of all, the name of the file as a string, and then we need to tell how we're going to be opening it. So we use w um, to show that we're opening it for writing. Always good practice to check to see whether we were successful or not. So we're going to put an if statement in here, and we'll ask to see if out file did not open successfully, it's going to return null. So we'll check to see whether it is null here or not. And if it is, then we'll print a message to the screen, um, something like unable to open the, the file specified. We could actually put the name of the file there if we wanted. And new line. And then we'll exit the program. So we can do exit and then we can we can exit um, with code one or we can use the constant exit failure to make it a little bit more clear. Alright, so at this point the file should be opened. Next thing we want to do is to um, write a string there. And it really doesn't matter what you write, but I'm, I'm going to use the suggested one here. To write, I use file printf or f printf. First parameter is the my file pointer, so out file, and then the string that I want to print. So, so hello there. How's it going? And finally, we can go ahead and, and close the file. So we'll F close the file pointer. Okay, let's run the program. And we didn't print out anything to the console, which means that, that it didn't fail. So if we go back over to our project, I'm going to hit F5 here to refresh it. We see that we have data.txt. Let's take a look. And we can see that as we expected, we wrote out that single line of, of code. It does go on to the next line again because we used a, a new line in there when we printed it. Now, you might be curious what about why you need to close the file. So let's, let's, let's go ahead and try something right now. If I put an infinite loop here okay, without closing it and I run the program again. Okay, so here it is. We've, we've written out all the data, but now we're just, we're just basically waiting. And then I go ahead and I want to try to open up data.txt um, and we ask do we want to replace the contents. We see that there's actually nothing written there. It actually doesn't write out the contents until you close the file. There's some kind of buffer internally that it, that it uses. So let's take that back out and close it again. Run it one more time. Just confirm that it's there. Okay. Alright, so that's the out part of our project. Let's go ahead and, and read it back in again. So to read a file in, I'm going to create another file pointer called in file. And I'll open that up again, use the same file as I'd written out. This time I, I use R to open it up for reading. And again, I should have the same check there in file is equal to null, print unable to open the file specified, and exit with our failure code. Okay, if I want to read things in, I need a string to stick that in. So I'm going to create an array of characters here. 
I had declared up at the top of the program a constant called max length, which was just, just 80. Right, so maximum length that I'm assuming for a line. And what we'll do now is, is we're going to um, write a, a while loop, a while loop instead of a for loop, because we don't know ahead of time how many lines are in the file. A good thing about scanf or fscanf is that it returns the number of items read. So we can easily put that as part of our condition. So we can say while when we're scanning in a file, for strings and sticking that into Word, as long as the number of items read is positive, it actually read something in, then we can continue on. And in this case, just go ahead and, and print it out to the to the console. I'm reading into an array, so you might wonder why I'm not using the ampersand here. Again, remember an array is a pointer, so it's already already has the address. We don't need to do that. And let's finish this up by closing my file. So f close the file pointer in file. And we should be done. So let's go ahead and run the program. And it's printing out percent s's. It looks like I forgot to print the word here. So let's go ahead and, and run it again with the word. All right. So what we have is we've read it in one word at a time and printed it each on its separate line. I could modify that if I wanted them all on the same line. I could put spaces back in them, and so on. One final note is that this, this check to see whether it's been read successfully is really important because I often will, you know, will, will mistype a, a file name or whatever, and, and this would be a, a real good case here. But it tried to open this, this other name here, this datar, and it wasn't there, so it, it should kick out and, and give you an error, and it shouldn't try to read from that. And that's it. Until next time, I'm Matt. Catch you later.